Call sign, Ned. Profession, Special Forces Intelligence Operator. PMC Wagner, Russian intelligence, and airborne troops are formidable enemies, trained and experienced. However, in direct confrontation with us, the enemy is usually forced to retreat. It's difficult to calculate precisely, but during the full-scale invasion, the personnel were destroyed definitely reached thousands, and the equipment – hundreds of units. My call sign is Ned. I'm the commander of a detachment within Timur's unit of the Defense Intelligence, GUR, of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine. I won't disclose details, but the intelligence operatives at GUR have numerous means of reconnaissance and enemy engagement. These means fly in the air, travel on land, move on water and underwater. Cinematic tools of Ukrainian intelligence include, for example, miniature drones like the Black Hornet. During assault operations, we fly into a building to survey the situation and detect possible enemy presence. In reality, we do have something similar to James Bond. There are specialists who operate like spies from the movies. Such people don't wear camouflage. They can work undercover behind enemy lines, gather secret data and sabotage. There are also special forces. These are more traditional fighters who directly engage in combat on the front lines and behind enemy lines. When asked about the classic movie plot where a lone fighter takes down enemies by the dozen, Ned responds briefly. It happens. Of course, rarely, but it happens. When we arrived to conduct an operation, soldiers there asked, Guys, who are you? But no one was supposed to know that we were the defense intelligence of Ukraine. Because if the enemy found out we were there, they would immediately try to strengthen their positions, knowing that we could act quite boldly and strike from anywhere. So we always responded simply, nobody. That's how we got our name. However, though people usually nod their heads, it's evident they don't quite believe us. It's obvious we're not locals. Three main types of tasks for the GUR scout are working undercover behind enemy lines, direct combat on the front lines, and sabotage reconnaissance activities. Each type requires a separate set of equipment. Let's look at the weaponry a scout can use deep behind enemy lines. For example, there is an undercover agent who has infiltrated an enemy enterprise with a task to eliminate a high-value target. His weapon must be compact, easy to transport, and must allow for covered carrying. It also must have a silencer. A 9x19 caliber is sufficient for this. We have several types of such weapons in our arsenal both automatic firearms and pistols equipped with silencers. During raids or assault operations, we use CZ Brand 2 assault carbines in 5.56 caliber or DDM carbines also in 5.56. They are equipped with silent shooting devices, flashlights and laser pointers. We also use light machine guns such as the 5.56 Minime. Its advantages include small dimensions and relatively light weight. We also utilize a 308 caliber machine gun. It's a very powerful weapon in the hands of our scouts. Knife, tourniquet, waste pouch for carrying additional equipment, grenade pouches, front magazine pouches, and also on the back I have an assault panel, where I can also place grenades, magazines, and additional gear. Helmet equipped with night vision device for night operations. Active earphones and an additional battery for the night vision device. A part of a sabotage reconnaissance group typically uses semi-automatic sniper rifles in 308 caliber. Mine has a thermal imaging front attachment. We also use Remington 700 sniper rifles in caliber 308 or caliber 338 Lapua Magnum. For nighttime operations, we use carbines of 300 blackout caliber, which allow working silently at short distances. As for a short pistol, we use the 6 hour M18. Engineering equipment is necessary too, because the territory may be mined, so we have to check it. This includes 25 to 30 meters of paracord, grappling hooks, and a collapsible mine prodder with a tip. Trash bags. The enemy should not know that anyone was here at all. Trampled grass, footprints on the ground, and waste can compromise our presence. 
so we take everything with us, leaving nothing behind. During sabotage reconnaissance operations, instead of a bulletproof vest, we use a chest rig, also a sling system or war belt. Going into enemy territory means having to cover a long distance with a fairly heavy backpack. Plus, if a contact happens, the operation is cancelled. If detected in any way, we must leave the area as quickly as possible. Sometimes, Girl Scouts help others leave the area. Say, in September 2023, CNN reported that Ukrainian fighters could have carried out attacks on the Wagner PMC in Sudan, 4,000 kilometers from Ukraine. Ukrainian intelligence neither confirmed nor denied their involvement. However, the head of the GUR, Kirillo Budinov, noted Ukraine will act against its enemies all around the globe. Ned keeps the secrecy intact. To most questions about specific operations, he responds classified. However, he nonetheless shared some details. It was a raid into the occupied Nova Kachovka. At that time, no one had landed on the left bank of Dnipro. We were tasked with carrying out a classic fire raid. During the mission, we destroyed a BTR-82A, burned down the enemy command post and eliminated 10 to 11 enemies. The enemy simply didn't expect anyone to cross the river directly into their trenches and land like that. They panicked and mobilized all reserves, which helped us learn about the units stationed there, their equipment and their reaction time. Another legendary amphibious operation was at the Potemkin Islands. Russian intelligence units were there. We had direct contact with them and eliminated them. By the time we arrived, the Potemkin Islands were about 80% under enemy control. When we left, about 70% were ours. In the Horlivka direction, together with the 24th Separate Mechanized Brigade, we were able to reclaim territory for Ukraine that had been under occupation since 2014. Bakhmut was another famous area where the GUR intelligence worked. At that time, the enemy was desperately trying to surround Bakhmut with all its might, leaving only the last road for us to hold. Wagner's assaults never stopped. One group would come, we would destroy them, and then another group would follow. I'd never seen anything like it. Basically, layers of bodies were lying all over meaning that Russians literally walked over their own dead. Nobody has a different principle. We never leave our own behind, and we always retrieve the bodies of fallen comrades. If we need to go back for it, we'll go back. If we need to go back five times, we'll go five times. On Nobody's Instagram, there's a video of a battle when two scouts engaged in combat with a whole group of Wagner fighters during a body evacuation. We retrieved this comrade's body not just once, when we raised the drones, we initially thought that the body had been taken by the Russians because he was well equipped with a SCAR rifle. They might have thought he was some kind of commander. But then we realized that the trench had become shallower. The body was simply buried by artillery explosions. The first time we dug it up, literally 15 meters away from the trench full of Wagner fighters. The first time we dug it out, the next time we moved it across the road, and so we gradually evacuated it. When we finally came to pick it up, the enemy started to approach. Our guys suddenly heard voices very close, within 5 meters. They immediately engaged the enemy, resulting in the elimination and injury of the enemy. Our fighters returned unharmed, and the next day, we returned and retrieved the comrade's body. This is one of many cases where GUR fighters acted independently and swiftly. The main thing valued in the defense intelligence of Ukraine is initiative the ability to make quick decisions in critical situations. In the US, there is CIA, in Britain, MI6, but currently the level of experience we have, as well as our country's military overall, is unmatched by anyone else in the world. We consist exclusively of volunteers. Essentially, for everyone in the main intelligence directorate, coming here was a dream. This motivates them to develop and work even harder. These people wanted to tackle the most difficult tasks and they do. Ned's words are confirmed by the video from Nobody's Instagram, where, during a mission, one of the fighters shouts, Despite the fact that GUR reconnaissance troops are considered the elite of the Ukrainian military, 
Ned himself considers someone else to be the best warrior. In our unit, we have some very strong individuals. For example, there is a person who in the first days of the full-scale invasion, single-handedly having only a semi-automatic 308 caliber rifle, eliminated 20 targets in the Kyiv region on a normal day. But for me, the best fighters are the ordinary soldiers of the armed forces of Ukraine. I deeply respect these people. They're made of steel. Ordinary guys, age 45 to 50, with an AK-74 sitting in a trench, for me, that's a true hero. However, the war of a Gur reconnaissance soldier can last much longer than that of an ordinary infantryman. Victory for the civilian citizens of Ukraine will come much sooner than victory for a Gur serviceman. For civilians, it's when we reclaim all Ukrainian territories. But there will still be a lot of work for us, and it will take a long time. We won't stop when we reach the borders of 1991. We will continue working to the enemy's head off, so that nothing threatens us in the future.